don't compost those bones and veggie scraps how to make bone broth today on the channel it is gorgeous here in Iowa this week fall is in full swing but we are about to get a rude awakening because the temperatures are going to drop quite significantly this Friday. If you are new here, my name is Karen and my husband Dan and I are on a journey to becoming as self-sufficient as we possibly can before we retire. Lately we've been talking about reducing food waste and we're going to continue with that today. We've made beef tallow, we've used the tail of the beef to make an oxtail recipe last week, and this week we're going to talk about how to save some money by making your own bone broth. I will talk about how to preserve the bone broth toward the end of this video, and I will also tell you how much money I saved by doing this. Bone broth is a delicious treat right from the jar, but it's also great for your fall soups and stews. I have mentioned before that if you try to buy an organic bone broth from the store, you're going to be spending about $7.50 for a four cup carton. But you can easily make your own with just scraps that you would normally throw away. Whenever you have something like a T-bone steak or a bone-in beef roast or some beef short ribs, anything with a beef bone in it, save those bones in a bag in your freezer and just keep adding to the bag. I'm making mine from just bones today, but if you wanted to add some vegetables to your bone broth, just don't throw away the scraps when you are cutting up vegetables to make another dish. Carrot tops and peelings, leaves from celery stalks, and even that paper-like skin on the outside of an onion all have flavor. So while you wouldn't eat it in its current state, you can put it in your freezer bag to make broth with. You can also buy beef bones at your local meat counter or your butcher. Those are about $4 a pound where I live. But if you just save up those bones in the freezer, you will get the best price possible. And that is free. Now this time I did have Dan go and get some beef bones from the butcher because I hadn't saved up enough in a freezer bag yet to make broth. And I'm also going to be adding some scraps from the recipe we talked about last week with the beef oxtail. The cartilage from the beef oxtail will not only give our broth a deeper flavor, but it will also add collagen. You can make beef bone broth with just the raw beef bones if you want to, but if you cook them first, they will be a lot more flavorful. I put the beef bones in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes to cook them. Then I just added all of the bones and the oxtail scraps into my slow cooker. You can also use a stock pot and just cook it on top of the stove. But with my full-time job, I needed a more set it and forget it way to make my broth. So I'm using the slow cooker today. After you have everything you want in the slow cooker, you need to cover it completely with water and I just filled mine up close to the top. This is going to go overnight on low for 10 hours and then when I get up tomorrow morning, I'm going to reset the slow cooker for another 10 hours on low while I'm at work. You can cook it less but the flavor will be good after about 20 to 24 hours of cook time. You can even cook it for a couple of days and get a deeper flavor. If I were doing this in a stock pot on top of the stove, I would cook it for about eight to 10 hours on a simmer, but you will have to watch it and make sure that the uh, bones or whatever you have in your stock pot is completely covered with water at all times. So you may 
have to add some water if you're doing this on top of the stove. So once the time was up, I removed all of the large solids that I could. Our chickens will love these bones. They love picking and eating anything that has to do with an animal. So the next thing I did was I lined a colander with a couple layers of cheesecloth. Then I put this over a bowl and I poured the broth into there to remove any of the remaining solids. Then I covered it and let it cool a little bit and put it in the magic refrigerator. And I say magic because as the broth cools, all of the fat will rise to the top and become a solid layer on the top and be super easy to remove. And when I pulled it out of the refrigerator the next day, this is what I had. The fat was now easy to remove. And this is tallow, so you could save this and use it in cooking if you wanted to. But I just made some beef tallow a couple weeks ago. So this tallow is going to go along with the bones to our chickens. And notice how jiggly the broth is. The collagen and the amino acids uh, during the cooking process turn this into a gelatin when it cools. You can tell you've got a good beef bone broth if it is wiggly and jiggly just like this. If you're going to use this up in short order, you can keep it in the refrigerator for up to five days. You can extend that time if you put it in an airtight container and put it in the freezer. In that case, it can last up to 12 months or even more, depending on how well your container keeps the freezer burn away. I want mine to be shelf stable and last even longer, so I am pressure canning mine this time. This method will allow it to last at least 18 months, and if there are no signs of spoilage, it could even last for years when it's stored in a cool, dark location. Just a few words about pressure canning. If you are not familiar with pressure canning and pressure canners, it's not the same as using a pressure cooker. They are two different appliances. So no matter what your pressure cooker appliance says about canning things in it, it is not as safe as a regular pressure canner. There are a lot of different brands of pressure canners out there. I recommend the All American brand. And you want to be sure that you follow all the manufacturer's instructions on how to use it because there have been some really bad accidents involving pressure canners if you're not familiar with what you're doing and you don't follow all of the safety instructions that are involved. But I don't want to scare you away from it because if you have all of the right equipment and you can follow instructions, you'll be able to pressure can safely. And because the internet is full of unsafe canning recipes, I feel like I need to mention that according to the USDA National Center for Home Preservation, if you're canning a low acid food like meat or meat broth, you cannot safely can that with just the water bath method like you would use for something like pickles. It must be pressure canned. Now I'm going to walk you through the pressure canning process with this broth rather quickly. I am not going to mention all of the manufacturer instructions. So again, make sure you do your research. I washed some pint jars in hot soapy water and also washed uh, a new batch of seals and the rings for the jars. I just really think this is a great size if we wanted to grab some broth and just heat it up on a cold day. I got the pressure canner heating up on my canning burner and so now I just want to take the broth and pour it into a pot on the stove to heat it up to boiling. Before it gets too hot, you may want to um, salt your broth. And a word about what kind of salt to use if you are going to can this. You don't want to use an iodized salt. Preferably, you would use a canning salt or some type of sea 
salt. And iodized salt will can just fine, but it will affect the flavor a little bit over time. So using a canning salt or a sea salt is better. Then, once it was boiling, I removed it from the burner and started filling my pint jars. I'm leaving one inch of headspace in my jars per the instructions for broth. And for me, that is to the bottom ring at the top of the jar. I ended up with six pints of broth and now I'm going to wipe those rims with a damp paper towel to make sure that we get a really good seal on our jars. Next is the seals and the rings. I put the seals on and then I tighten the ring down to just finger tight and into the pressure canner they go. I lined up the lid properly and fastened it down. The All-American canners have a dial and also a weight to use to gauge how many pounds of pressure um, is going on in your pressure canner. The pounds of pressure that you need will vary according to your height above sea level. For my altitude, I need 15 pounds of pressure for 20 minutes. The dial will help us to gauge when we're getting toward that 15 pounds of pressure, but we are going to go by the weight that I put on the pressure canning valve more so than the dial. Once the steam was escaping from the vent for a solid 10 minutes, then I made sure that I had the proper hole for the 15 pound pressure and put that over the valve. Now I watch for that first jiggle of the weight. When the weight jiggles, that means we're ready to go. And I started my timer for 20 minutes. Adjust the temperature, the heat on our burner so that this weight will only jiggle about one to four times every hour. Now I'm only doing 20 minutes, so if it jiggles maybe twice, we're good. And I will never leave my pressure canner unattended. One of the greatest safety tools is to stay by it and make sure that the pressure is right. Once that 20 minutes was up, I turned the burner off and then I'm going to let the, the pressure steam escape naturally from my pressure canner. I'm not going to take the weight off. I'm just going to let it sit there and naturally release the pressure. And that took about 45 minutes. Once my dial got down to zero, I knew that the pressure was released. But I'm also going to take this weight off and wait another two minutes just to be sure that all the pressure is out of there. Then I just opened up the canner and removed the jars to cool overnight. And the next day, all of them had sealed nicely. And so here is my finished product. So altogether, I got 12 cups of bone broth and that 12 cups of bone broth would have cost me $23 if I was going to go buy my organic bone broth at the store. Pretty good for something that can be made from food scraps that you would normally throw away. The weather is getting colder and winter is coming so what do you think? Will you be saving your scraps to make bone broth for your soups and stews? Let me know in the comments and if you got any value from this video please give it a like and also consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber i'll be back this weekend with another update on my weight loss journey thank you for being here and i'll see you then